Okay, welcome. This is day two of social media for people that want to help the environment. I'm Kathy Sipple, I'm your host, and I just wanted to recap by letting you know that I have included some brief notes of what we covered the previous day here on our event page, and I'll, I'll keep doing that each day as I work to get the videos done. And again, I really want to thank uh, everybody that made the financial support possible to get that done. I do have to kind of hire out to get part of that uh, accomplished, and that's just huge for me to be able to get that done and share it beyond whomever is able to attend this week. So anyway, we'll, we'll do more with this, but for now, these are the, briefly the things that we covered. A real hashtags 101, we covered how to create an online petition using um, change.org, and we talked about some ways to, um, you know, to begin to reach out to people or to share your petition once it was put together. So a couple of questions that arose yesterday, one from Roseanne was, um, she wanted me to talk about a tweet up. And for those of you who have never been to a tweet up, it might sound absolutely silly, but it is, it can really be a lot of fun. And it's a great way to kind of, you know, go, I, I kind of think of it as a membrane. You know, you don't really want to spend all your time on social media. You can't really afford, because there's only one of you, to be at every single live event that you'd like to be at. So I find that TweetUp is just a really um, focused way to meet people and interact with people who have intention to interact with you online. Okay, so that's kind of what a TweetUp is about. They're also, they also tend to be the early adopters or the innovators in the social space, and they're generally pretty helpful, you know, in sharing with their knowledge. So it's just a great way to connect with people who can tell you, hey, what app do you use for this? What app do you use for that? And I know whenever I've gone, I certainly end up learning a lot uh, from nearly everybody that I talk to. You know, just what are they doing with social media? How are they using it? They're not necessarily all going to be, you know, interested in environment. It probably, you know, comes down a little heavy on the tech representation. But again, you can learn the tech tools and get, um, you know, get friends out there in the social space. And from that, you know, you can do whatever you want. With, with these tools. So I know in our own area, Northwest Indiana, the hashtag is NWI TweetUp. I know that because I'm actually the one that founded that TweetUp here in our area. And uh, the torch has since been passed to, to others who have been kind of taking it and working it. Right now, I think Valpo Life is actually the one that is, is sponsoring them and organizing it, which is great because they've got the manpower. You know, they can do it. So if you follow, you know, any of the life handles on Facebook or Twitter, Portage Life, Valpo Life, NW Indiana Life, um, they've got all kinds of them. It looks like they are continuing to use that NWI TweetUp um, hashtag. So doing a search for the TweetUp is definitely a good way. And again, if you're following them or just, you know, asked to be notified about the TweetUp, you can keep posted there. I don't think that it's monthly at this point. It seems like it's every every couple months. But basically what happens, uh, I was not at this one, but you can see this is kind of a representative crowd. It's, it's not all, you know, people in their 20s. It's kind of, you know, pretty good representation of different ages. And people come together usually in um, a local drinking establishment, you know, so a little bit like green drinks, but with a techie edge. And basically, you, you usually check in, you know, with your Twitter handle, and it's helpful if you tweet a little bit while you're there. So you can check in and say, hey, I've arrived at, um, you know, NWI TweetUp. And when you're sharing that, that hashtag ahead of time, you can say, who's coming to hashtag NWI TweetUp tonight? You start to kind of see the stream when you click on, again, we talked about, um, hyperlinked text. Hyperlinked text is text that you can click on and something happens. Either you go to an outside web link or in the case of a hashtag, it serves as a filter to just limit your Twitter stream or your Facebook um, post to status updates that include that particular hashtag. Okay, so you can just do a little search on TweetUp 
and see who's talking about it, see who, you know, if there's anybody you want to meet. The bonus of doing that advanced work is that you can say, hmm, you know, interesting, uh, let's see who's going. Dave Woodson, uh, he's a character, <laughs> he's a little bit crazy, uh, he's a realtor here in our area, and I say crazy, I mean that in a, a good way, uh, primarily, <laughs> he's, but he's uh, probably got more Twitter followers than almost anybody here locally, he's got almost 20,000 followers, so I will say Dave is really good hearted, I don't know that he's all about the environment, unfortunately, um, might kind of fall outside of that camp. But he is very, uh, very friendly, and he definitely tries to give newbies, you know, some retweet help, and, you know, he's, he's pretty good in that way. So, you know, Charlotte had the question, how do we start, or how do I communicate with people that aren't necessarily about, how did you put it, they were more concerned about capitalism than they were concerned about the environment. And I was thinking about this a lot. You know, because I'm like, all right, how would I approach Dave, for instance? He doesn't know that he's going to be included in this talk. Um, I started out, before we really started, by mentioning an event that um, I really enjoy called NWI Food Swap, Northwest Indiana Food Swap. And it's um, a place where you don't have to be a foodie, but, uh, you know, it kind of helps. Anybody who grows their own food as a home cook or just has extra produce, or you could have farm fresh eggs that you want to share, you bring your stuff to, you know, a designated venue. So again, it's a little bit like Tweet Up, but with food. We've got green drinks that's about environmentalism. We've got Tweet Up that's for tech, and Food Swap, it dawns on me, is kind of the food end of that. But, um, you know, food is really the catalyst. And so I, I get into it because I want to eat healthy, I like the idea of building a local food economy and, you know, helping people learn about their own resilience that, yes, you can grow sprouts in, you know, February on your kitchen counter, you know, in Indiana. Um, but, this, you know, this is what I brought. I brought some canned items and then I made some fresh, um, you know, healthy deli salads. They weren't out of my garden, unfortunately. And then, you know, I traded for other stuff. So how does this relate to Dave? Well, Dave really likes food. <laughs> he also really likes, you know, right-wing politics. But I thought, well, you know, if we, can share, if we can share food items, that's one way to get the ball rolling. You know, I don't know that I'm going to convert him, but I tend to look at relationships kind of like a Venn diagram, and I... I think I need to create this Venn diagram because I actually couldn't find it online somewhere. But what I'm thinking about is when you talk about environment, there are actually so many sectors within environment. You know, there's health, there's food, there's clean air, there's clean water, there is, um, you know, CAFO, there, there is, um, you know, solar energy, there's just all kinds of alternative energy. There is alternative health, indigenous rights, uh, Charlotte brings up, you know, so many different aspects. And one thing that I found when I was running the green drinks is, you know, I was just kind of curious about all of it. I wanted to become greener in all categories, frankly. Um, you know, I, I do still have my Ford Escape XLT that's from 2001. I don't have a Prius, but number one, I can't really afford to go buy a Prius right now. <laughs> and number two, I barely drive. I work from home, so most most days I actually don't drive, you know, at all. Um, I mean, I probably take the car out of the garage, you know, just a couple times a week, if that, just to go to, you know, grocery store, maybe to go, to, you know, to a client meeting, that kind of thing. Uh, and then, you know, my husband and I usually go to the dunes on the weekend. But, you know, we both live and work in Valparaiso where where we live, uh, excuse me, that's redundant, but anyway, so if somebody gets all up on my case, like, I can't believe you don't drive a Prius, you know, how can you be green if you don't drive a Prius, I just feel like, gosh, they haven't gotten to know my lifestyle, like, how do they have the right to judge me on that if they're not looking at my whole life, you know, holistically, okay, so... Rosanna saying she loves her Prius, and I'm jealous. I would love, <laughs> love to have a Prius. I'm still um, working on manifesting that for myself. 
But yeah, common ground. I mean, common ground, I really think, is very, very useful. And uh, I am going to create this graphic to share because I think it's just one that's needed. But I'll give you an example of people even you know, when I invited them to the green building um, topic at Green Drinks, I thought, well, green building, those people, they're going to be all interested in kind of the same thing, you know. Well, they weren't. I found that some people wanted, you know, to be off the grid, and they were just, you know, all about almost like survivalist mentality. Um, and then there were people that were more about performance, you know, well, what's the R value on that insulation? They were more about the reduce, um, you know, consumption kind of thing. It's a high-performing house. There were these, like, kind of energy, you know, geeks, as it were. And, I mean, I love it all, frankly, so I don't think there's bad or good. And then there were people that were, you know, let's work with nature, or let's work with passive solar, let's work with daylighting, you know. So I found even within that one category, there really wasn't the common ground that you would expect. You, you know, I think just if you can kind of keep an open ear and an open mind to find out what is your thought bubble and then what is the thought bubble that this other person is in and then just look for, you know, where you might get the conversation started, you know, that, that intersection. So Lisa has said common ground is important. That's what I hope to find and show and share with my writing. And I think writing is such a revelatory way to do that because you're putting more of you into it and it people can sit with it they can learn about you over time and instead of it just being you know one tweet that's like why doesn't everybody get rid of their SUV and you know drive a Prius that can be a little off-putting but Lisa just said it's publicly personal and that's right it really is I mean it's you know not exactly a diary but you are revealing you know your own thoughts over time and I think you can serve as an example of, um, you know, just serve as, as an example for others. When they look at your lifestyle, what you're willing to do, what you're trying to do, even if you don't meet all of your goals all the time, I think it's still really okay. It says what you're interested in, what areas of your thought bubble are you trying to go beyond. Um, so it might not be as helpful as I had hoped, but it's, it's a general concept that I think I'm going to keep coming back to. So anyway, um, let me see if I've covered TweetUp. So I know Dave from TweetUp. That, that's how I kind of got here in my thought bubble was using Dave Woodson, uh, the realtor, the Republican realtor <laughs> that smokes cigars and, you know, is not necessarily a tree hugger. But you know what? He loves his kid and he loves cooking and he's been trying to get, uh, you know, healthier. He's been losing weight. He's been working out. And so I thought, well, that would be really neat to get Dave to, you know, food swap. And once he was there, you know, he was like, oh, well, that's kind of cool that, that that farm is in Michigan City. Like, I didn't know that. He's, he's not, you know, stuff's definitely not a vegan or anything like that. But he thought it was kind of cool that, hey, this sausage is from Indy, this, you know, cheese is from Sure Farms, and that's in, you know, Michigan City where I live. That's cool. So it's just, you know, a really, really kind of fun thing. Oh, kids farm camp. Hey, great idea, Charlotte. <laughs> I'll invite Dave to bring his kid. Um, she'd probably be the perfect age. She's adorable. I, you know, that would be just great. So, um, okay, Nancy is saying that my sound is going in and out every so often. Are you, is anybody else having trouble hearing me? That's the first I've heard of it. Okay, just a little bit. Um, I've got the same headset, so I'm not sure, but I just adjusted the mic a little bit. Um, hmm, okay. All right, well, I'll try to be conscious of my enunciation, and I'll, I'll try, but a few of you are saying it's a little muffled. My apologies for that. I'm not sure what else I can uh, tweak at this point, but if it gets worse, let me know. Sometimes the mic does slip. So I think food is a great starting point. You know, everybody eats, right? I was just talking to a professor at Valparaiso University yesterday, and I think I'll be interviewing her for my podcast, the 219 Green Connect podcast. She said that she's a managing change. Um, let's see if I can find her. Valparaiso University. Oh, boy, I don't even remember her name. But um, we just met once at, like, a Juice Plus event, uh, business school. But she, she teaches a school 
a class at the VU College of Business, and she gets the kids to think about what project could they embrace that would, you know, really involve a cultural shift. You know, what would make them have to work very hard to influence people and make a shift. And so what she was talking about, and I can't find that uh, professor right this second, that's all right, was um, for the last few years she has had the kids work on making crickets um, integ or integrating bugs, not just crickets, integrating bugs into menus of local restaurants, like having the public embrace the idea of eating bugs. Like, I don't know about you, but I have never intentionally eaten a bug, although at TEDx, uh, Changing the Way We Eat last year, which I helped organize here in Valparaiso, one of the most popular talks that was streaming uh, simulcast was the talk on a bakery that was making, you know, muffins and cookies and other baked goods out of cricket flour. And so, you know, it is happening. In Valparaiso, is it happening? Not yet. But I thought that it was really cool that these kids were, you know, tackling that challenge. They had to make a presentation to um, a local restaurant, so they picked Valley Farm to Fork Restaurant. They also own uh, the Tomato Bar, which is another uh, restaurant here in Valparaiso that's fairly committed, you know, to, to using local and sustainable foods. And, you know, they didn't change up their menu yet. They didn't put crickets or anything like that on the menu yet. But they started the conversation, you know. So they found the people that were probably the most likely to share their thought bubble or, you know, meet them on that edge of overlap and, you know, get something started. And so, you know, there's an, I love TED, the TED videos, if you guys watch those, if you're fans. This is a really good one. It's about starting a movement. And there's one with just a guy dancing in the park. And he's dancing all alone. And then, you know, he looks a little silly. I don't, I could probably find that video quickly. Um, let's see, TEDx, TED, start in a movement. Yeah, I want to share the, the link with you because it really is fun. Uh, Derek Silt Sivers, this is his, uh, his talk. And it's, it's just a fun video, but it, it looks ridiculous um, when you, you watch it because there's just one guy and he's, you know, dancing alone and then he's joined by one person. He looks a little less lonely and then, you know, somebody else comes and then once you've got, I forgot how many people he says you need to have to have a movement, but, you know, once it's like four or five people, it looks like fun and Charlotte says flash mob, so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how can you make it fun? I think just by yelling at people and saying, hey, you know, you're a bad person because you don't care about the environment, doesn't, you know, you're going to attract more flies with honey than with vinegar, right? So, you know, how can you make your movement fun, interesting, um, engaging, welcoming, you know? Um, I know, again, from green drinks, there are some different personality types that arise, and what I found is there's hardly anybody I know that's across the board doing everything in every single category, you know, exactly perfectly. Like they're, they're vegan, they're driving a Prius, or they're biking everywhere. You know, they have geosolar in their home. They, um, you know, eat only, drink only fair trade coffee. You know, they only use natural stuff to do their, you know, laundry. Everybody's doing what they can. That's exactly right, Charlotte. And um, so I just think, you know, find out the areas that they're willing to be interested in and, you know, like maybe just take them to that edge of discomfort <laughs> but not over the edge where it seems judging or alienating. And that's, that's really, I think, more about social and emotional intelligence, frankly, than how to do something tricky on Facebook, you know. But if you get time, I think you'll enjoy this guy, Derek uh, Cyber's talk and the video that accompanies it. It's, it's you know, just a real visual representation on starting a movement. And I think, you know, his whole thing is, you know, if you've ever thrown a party and, you know, you just put one time for people to arrive and you don't know, you know, for sure, is anybody going to come? Um, it's kind of fun to have that friend that you've, 
invited to come help you set up ahead of time so that when the doors open to the guests, you've got something going on. It doesn't look like you just freaking out in your kitchen or, or worse, sitting there <laughs> like waiting, bored, you know, with nobody there. So I think, you know, really my strategy and how this would translate to environmentalism would be find your best allies first, you know, kind of scope out who you've got on your side. And I mean, gosh, we can start with the people right here on this call, right? We, we already know that. Um, I would say green drinks, again, that I mentioned yesterday, also a great place. And then when you've got areas of interest that aren't necessarily 100% all about the environment, but you want to explore those edges, like Roseanne mentioned yesterday, her work for the American Cancer Society, and how it's all connected, that is true. You know, there is all kinds of stuff related to, um, you know, to cancer, like natural health and avoiding chemicals and, you know, eating organic and all this stuff. Um, Charlotte's saying creation care. I don't even know exactly what that is. Faith groups. Um, so I'd like to know more about that. But yeah, absolutely. Everything is connected. And I think to Lisa's point, when you blog about it, it allows you to to talk about, um, you know, how you see that connection in your own life. And so I think it makes it more personal, it makes it more of a narrative, and people can get to know you, want to join your tribe. Okay, and Charlotte explained that for me. She said, care for the earth since God gave us the earth. Great, okay. So like stewardship of the earth or whatever. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and I have seen that coming out in a lot of different um, faith-based groups that aren't, you know, haven't been known in the past as being terribly progressive, but, you know, it's just neat to see where these ideas are originating. So I think the, the best thing that you can do is um, start with, oh boy, um, okay, I'm just going to Google here. I can't remember what this number is called, but there's a special name for it, Dunbar's number. That's what I was trying to think of. Dunbar, Robin Dunbar, said that we only ever have 150 true friends at most, even if your Facebook, you know, says you've got 2,590 friends or whatever. There's an anthropologist, an evolutionary anthropologist that says, you know, 150 are the number of connections that you can really maintain a meaningful relationship with. So I don't know, maybe somebody could do a little bit better. But when I started out in real estate, um, after moving to Valparaiso from Chicago back in uh, 2003, I literally knew not a soul. I knew, well, I knew only the people who had studied in my real estate class, but I graduated from real estate class on a Wednesday, uh, closed on Thursday in, on our house, and then took my um, licensing exam the next day. So here I am, a newly minted realtor, in a brand new area where I know nobody. <laughs> so I had to start somewhere, you know, and so I looked at this number, 150, this is what my sales manager told each of us as newbies, was to write down the 150 people that you know the best, who you think, think highly of you, you know, regardless of their politics, regardless of maybe their, you know, willingness to do something about the environment, like who do you think that you have pull with? I would say, you know, you might want to jot that in a notebook. You might want to scan your Facebook um, and kind of decide. I've I've got some little secret things that I'll I'll show you guys, make you privy to. Um, there are things called groups on well, not groups, excuse me, um, lists on Facebook where you can. Um, manage your friends and kind of put them in different different buckets, okay? So you can do this to help um, let Facebook know whose who's updates you don't want to miss, you know, if you really want to make sure you, you see everything that your mom does or your sister does or what have you. And then I've got, you know, schools. I think these are probably things that Facebook put together for me. Businesses, uh, places where people have mutually mentioned that they've worked Oh, what do you know? I've got a Dunbar 150. I didn't even remember that I did that. Okay, so these people are the ones that I really think I've got the best relationship with, let's say, or the most pull with. So you can just create a list. Nobody knows that they're on that list unless they're happening to show their screen to you like I am right now. 
Um, but I've got all different kinds of lists. Um, let's see, Northwest Indiana green people. Okay, they're not literally green, of course, but it's real helpful for me when I publish a green drinks event or when I have been doing it in the past and now, bless her heart, Kobe is doing it and uh, another woman, Jory and Nancy, who's also on the call. But what I can do is not have to scroll through thousands of friends. I can just say, oh, where's that list? And I'm constantly, you know, updating this. Um, so that's a really helpful tool if you haven't used that. Think about the intersection of your Dunbar list, you know, the people that you can influence, that 150 number, and then who of those do you know that are, you know, environmentally conscious or whatever other label, you know, you want to put it on there. Again, this is kind of for your eyes only, so you can call it whatever the heck you want. Um, hopefully that makes sense. By the way, I don't want to get you too crazy, but you can do the exact same thing on Twitter. You can basically do this on almost every social media platform. Now, I don't want to say every, but, but quite a few. Um, I did this a couple weeks ago, and I know some people said that was a lot to take us through in one setting. So I don't, I'd kind of like to let this wash over you so that you know it's possible. If you want to know how to do it, you can always replay the video later, and each of these sites also lets you uh, tell how to do it. So what I mean is I can see who are my followers. And, okay, here's somebody... Uh, interested in architecture at a small scale, so the living, you know, living small, small houses, that's kind of neat. I would say that that's, that's green, in a, you know, in a way, in a particular area. So if I wanted to, um, I would follow him first, and then what I could do is click on this little gear, and I can say, um, add this person to a list. And I've got all kinds of lists here on Twitter. Um, emergency management, that's not really one for me, that was a sample for a client, but I've got, um, you know, NWI tweet up people, I've got Northwest Indiana, I've got, um, you know, potential partners, Green Northwest Indiana. Um, the ones with locks on them, by the way, are private, so if you don't want anybody to know that they're on your list, you can decide to make it private. There's a privacy setting here, public or private. So if it's for your eyes only, if you want to say, you know, dingbats that are not voting the right way on this, uh, you know, environmental bill, then, you know, maybe you do or maybe you don't want to make that a public thing, depending on what your objective is. If it's to shame them, maybe you do want to make that a public list. If it's so that you can message them or, you know, encourage them to see their, you know, different way. <laughs> Maybe you want to make it private, okay? But anyway, you can name that whatever you want, and it's for your eyes only. A public list is kind of a nice way to be a curator and to help people find out about resources um, that might, might be useful, okay? So I'm on 34 lists, um, or no, I'm sorry, these are my lists, okay? but I am listed on a number as well. So that's sometimes interesting is to see where do people list me. And, um, okay, here's peeps I hug. This is one of my favorite lists to be on. These are people I hug whenever I see them face to face. <laughs> this is my friend Amy Stark, and I'm on her list. So I, I know there's a hug coming when I see her. I'm on this one, Local Food and Garden, by Erica Popovich. She's... Um, with the environmental educators, oh, it's a lot of E's, I can't remember, uh, in the state of Indiana. Um, you know, big ideas, Dave Woodson, hey, I talked about Dave before, one, or biz ideas, okay, so I'm glad that he's, you know, got me on his biz ideas. Um, social media VIP, I'm on Harrison Painter's, you know, list for that. So it's just kind of cool um, to see how other people see you. I'm on a, you know, consultant and coaches list, whatever, you know. Uh, it's not going to make or break me, but it's just kind of cool. And then uh, Charlotte's asking, how did you see whose list you're on? Okay, what you do is you basically just go to your, um, to your bio, and you'll have tweets, following, followers, favorites, and lists. So if you click on lists, you'll see all of your own lists first. And if, then, if you scroll past that, you'll see the list that you've appeared on for other people. So that's how I got to that.
And then uh, Lisa said that she missed the Dunbar list. And that, I'll just repeat that quickly. It's um, Robin Dunbar is an anth evolutionary anthropologist, and uh, they just kind of came up with the number approximately 150, that that's the number of people that you can maintain a meaningful relationship, uh, whether in a hunter-gatherer society or on Facebook. I don't know. I think there might be people who can do more than that. But I think that starting, you know, to understand your own life, your own social relationships, almost like you were plotting a permaculture garden, <laughs> just to say, here's the microclimate I have where, um, you know, high-performance housing meets local food. And maybe with that, I want to look at, you know, how do you make hoop houses stand up to the elements so that in zone five or six you can grow you know corn all year round I mean that, that might be crazy but um, you know look at the elements that you've got and then you can almost play with it rather than having it be a challenge you can look at it as hmm you know I'm an artist I'm creating this beautiful masterpiece and the people in my Dunbar list you know these 150 that are in my camp that I have meaningful relationships with how do I map them out socially? You know, what does that look like? There used to be something in LinkedIn Labs that unfortunately I don't think they've got anymore. Um, let me just see. I hate to mention something and then it went away, but LinkedIn, yeah, in Maps, no longer supported. Okay. They had kind of a fun thing that actually showed you all of your relationships in a map. It actually, you know, almost looked like a miniature galaxy. It was pretty cool, but no more. That's all right. Not a big deal. But you could kind of see clusters of people and how they fell. Like, hey, all these people are, you know, from this geographic area, or all these people are from this, you know, company I used to work for, or here's this um, spoke that has lots of connections. You know, you, you could just kind of see they're a really heavy hitter. Not everybody in my 150 is totally, you know, of um, equal, I mean, everybody's important, but maybe not of equal influence in certain areas, okay? So the same thing that you can do on Facebook by putting people on list, uh, you can do it on Twitter, I've shown you that. You can also do it on, um, let me just go ahead, I'm going to put one of you on a list. Lisa, are you, I can't remember if you're on here. Yes, you are, okay. So, um, if I go to Lisa's LinkedIn, I can actually go over here to contact info and I could put in additional info. But what I want to show you right now is just to tag and I want to tag Lisa as, um, let's see, I'll just do green for right now, okay? And probably people that I want to blog with because we talked last week about, you know, trying to kind of do some blog accountability thing because we tend to blog about some similar topics. Um, so Charlotte's asking, do you recommend LinkedIn for environmental action? You've shied away from that. You know, um, it's a good question. I think where I would probably recommend it the most would be either in groups so let's let's think about for you. Um, Charlotte again is with Prairie Winds Farm in the South Bend area. Um, there's a sustainable agriculture group, for instance. Let's just see what that looks like. You know, if there was a um, you know piece of legislation that was impacting this you know this uh, this group of people. There are 45,390 members who I would believe would be very like-minded. Um, so, you know, I recognize this name here, Diane Hatz. She's actually the one who is in charge of TEDx Manhattan, changing the way we eat. She's the one who contacted me to ask me to host a TED event. Um, Dan Sockreiter, I know fairly well. He was um, on one of our webinars that we did for Sustainable Indiana. Uh, he's down in Indy. So he's, he's a real cool guy. Thomas Henderson, I think I mentioned him last week, also met him through Sustainable Indiana, and he's director at the Axe Project. Um, so I think this looks like a really, really strong group. So I wouldn't just post it as my status update, because then you're going to be seen by, you know, every attorney that you know, every 
you know, realtor that you know who may or may not care. You might get engaged in, you know, conversations that you really don't want to have to explain every nuance of what you're doing. But if you could say, you know, post in this one group's discussion forum and say, you know, do you know what anybody's doing about this, that, or the other thing? Or have you found any good resources to explain the impact of, you know, CAFOs on surrounding, you know, traditional or small-scale farm, da-da-da-da. I think that would be absolutely excellent. So this is just one group, and you're able to join up to 50. It's totally free, you know, so there are no chamber dues, typically. Sometimes chambers of commerce or alumni organizations actually do try to make their LinkedIn groups mimic their real life, um, you know, membership people that are dues paying. But I'd say most of them, for the, you know, probably 99% are just you can join okay so um, Lisa saying that LinkedIn networks are good there are good articles posted and references there it's a great professional tool that's a great point too so if you are blogging like I know Lisa is and I have been doing I haven't I haven't been sharing as much of my stuff on LinkedIn as I probably could or should but I would say you know take it take it piece by piece if it's something that's you know intensely personal and it's really more about you know, lifestyle, then maybe maybe it's not a good LinkedIn sharing. But if it's how, you know, sustainable agriculture impacts local economies or, you know, whatever, anything that is remotely businessy, then I would definitely share it, you know, on LinkedIn. And uh, Lisa is saying, I find LinkedIn is a refreshing alternative when I want to step out of the friend mode and be more professional. I have to say, I absolutely do too. I mean, it's kind of no nonsense. It's just... Um, I, I go right to who do I want to find, frankly, um, and I'll, I'll just show you real quick. If you've never used this tool, this is a great, great way to find like-minded people. Okay, there's this little, um, let me first start on home. Yeah, okay. I think you have to be on the home page to have the advanced uh, things show up. But right next to the right of the little magnifying glass on the search bar is just a little tiny word that says advanced. And I think so many people don't even ever know that that's there. But if you click on it, it just opens up a world of opportunities. So let's, let's try to think about um, poor Roseanne. We haven't heard her voice. So I'm going to just try to think about her challenge that she she sent out yesterday, which was, um, you know, wanting to work with people from American, you know, Cancer Society and tying in her interest in, you know, organic food and, um, you know, natural health. So I'm just going to simply put in here cancer and um, natural health. Like, let's just see what, what that yields. And I'm not at this point going to put in anything else, but if I wanted to limit it to people who are nurses or doctors or, you know, acupuncturists or whatever, I could certainly put in titles. I could put in a geographic restriction if I wanted to find people that I could, you know, network with locally. But right now, let's just keep it wide open and see what happens. All right. And so what I'm seeing is um, I've gotten 2,368 results. Now this might not, you know, be the tightest search I could ever develop, but it's a start. You know, I could probably learn, oh, this is yielding me too many false positives because I didn't, I didn't restrict it by this or that. But let's just go ahead and click on Elise Cohen Ho. I do not know her. She's a second level connection. That's what this little, you know, second sign means. So that means we've got, I've got a connection or, mo or more. I've got two shared connections that could connect me to her. Linda Landers and Vincent James, and I'm a little embarrassed to say I don't immediately know where I know them from. I try to be a little bit, um, you know, cautious at who I connect to, but if they reached out to me and he was founder of Food for Life, you know, I can see how I would have totally taken that intro. But let's just go ahead and click on hers and see. So she's a naturopathic therapist, business mentor, published author, motivational speaker, expert holistic health, um, Mm -hmm. So what it's doing is it's highlighting health and natural health because those were subsets of what I, you know, put in there. And I'm not seeing cancer being, you know, featured prominently yet. So let me just do a quick search. Okay. All I did, by the way, was I just did a um, select all 
which you can do with Control A, and then Control F is search. So any page that you're on at all, you can you know do a quick search and find the word. So it, cancer is actually only mentioned one time on her whole profile, but it says um, I. Uh, particular note is the time that I spent with Fran Drescher from The Nanny putting together a series of articles related to cancer schmancer. So, uh, you know, maybe that article series would be of interest. Um, not, you know, maybe the strong, strong connection I was hoping for, but let's just go back and see. And Roseanne, if you have any tips for me on how I can tighten up this uh, search, that would be much appreciated. Maybe you've kind of been down this road before. Um, you know what, let me try, how about American Cancer Society? So what I'm looking for now is maybe somebody that either has worked or currently works at the American Cancer Society and also, for whatever reason, is mentioning the words natural health, okay? So let's just see. Okay, so Director of Major Gifts at the um, American... Cancer Society. All right, so he's got a natural flare. This is showing up as a false positive. So what I'm going to do here is make this a Boolean search, and I think that's B-O-O-L-E-A-N. And what that means is you're just going to make these two words dependent on one another. We need to have natural plus health in a row because this is just yielding too many false positives for me. Natural career choice. Um, you know, Natural Bodybuilding Association. That's not really what I'm after. So let's research. Okay. Nah. Let's try organic. That one didn't work out so well. Holistic Health, that's a good one. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, organic Search. <laughs> organic Chemistry. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Organic Growth. Let's try. Good idea. Holistic Health. Okay, so, you know, it's not the world's very, very easiest thing, but the trick is find find one, and then typically birds of a feather flock together, you know. So um, here we go. Now this one's looking kind of good. Survivor Life Coach Paula Holland DeYoung. Okay, we have one shared connection, and it's Mary uh, Hallgren. Okay, that sounds pretty good. And so she's in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. And specialties, supporting cancer patients, survivors, and their loved ones. Um, pretty cool. Tools that promote health and healing. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. Let's just see. Now, what, what did I look for? Was it holistic? Yeah. Okay. Her coaching work encourages thriving during and after cancer using complementary, holistic, and spiritual coping tools that transform fear into hope and choice. Okay, so her personal battle with cancer inspired her to found What's Next for My Life. So, I mean, that sounds pretty good. I don't know that it's, you know, totally about food. We could probably drill down and see, you know, what other things that she's into and, you know, just, just find out. But again, the trick is, like, find you know, one person, start somewhere. And, and this is, by the way, like something that you can do is do some network diving through the people in your 150, right? So let's say that um, I was starting with my 150 and Mary Hogren was in there. She's not, unfortunately. But I could say, hey, Mary, would you be willing to introduce me to, you know, to this gal? I see that you're connected, or this is my interest in meeting her. Um, you know, I'd just like to maybe speak with her a little bit and find out where our areas of overlap might be, something like that. Okay, but um, let's see what Roseanne's got to say. Unfortunately, I think my ideas are, as for, are a bit forward for ACS. But for survivors, some are interested in, in being healthy in a natural way. Okay, cool. Well, that's good. And um, gosh, there is a woman that I know. Oh, man. I just, it is kind of crazy. Maybe that um, Dunbar's number is right. Because <laughs> I'm having trouble remembering her name right offhand. I do remember that she's from Rockford, Illinois. And she has done some amazing things uh, with natural health and cancer. So let me just see. Here, here's a different way to do it. So if I can't recall, I just know she's located in or near um, Rockford, Illinois. That's all I can remember off the top of my head. I could probably dig into my 
you know, my email and find something from her. But LinkedIn makes it pretty easy to just do a quick lookup. Here's a Rockford, Illinois zip code. So I come back here, I put in that zip code, and I only want to see people that are from, we'll just call it a 25 mile radius around um, there. We'll say cancer and natural health. And this is her. Awesome. That's great. Okay, Pat Halverson. She would be an awesome contact for you if you do not know her. Center for Living Whole. She founded the center um, in 2005. Her interest in holistic healing services and natural healing education resulted from experience with malignant synovial sarcoma cancer in 2003. And she does all kinds of um, really, really neat things. She, she has uh, personal growth, natural health classes, workshops, retreats, all kinds of, you know, great, great stuff. So she's Pat Halverson, and let me just go to her contact info so you can take a look at that. Uh, company website is company, or excuse me, centerforlivingwhole.com. So although I did this for Roseanne, I hope that I'm showing you a tool that will teach you how to fish. You know, this is not about catching that one fish. It's about, you know, hey, if I wanted to find sustainable farmers or if I wanted to find people that care about, you know, wildflowers or, um, you know, Tacey mentioned yesterday, um, you know, that her her joy was in sharing how being outdoors in nature can really be so empowering and enlightening. And um, I can't remember, Tacey, if you were supposed to be on the same call with Allie O'Malley or not. I just love that name, Allie O'Malley. Uh, she's another one that I know from interactions with Sustainable Indiana. She actually did one of our webinars and she's a um, a psychologist, I think at Butler, I want to say, and um, she did a really nice presentation for us and it was exactly about that very thing. Here she is. Um, so again, I'm just trying to kind of go within my own network and give you give you guys some heads up. But she did just a, a real, real cool thing. So conservation psychology, I didn't even know there was such a thing. So again, it's like, where is your overlap? And, you know, how, what does that look like with a psychologist? You know, you wouldn't maybe immediately think that that was a go-to place to explore, but she's, she's really into hiking, and she did, um, I bet I could find it on YouTube. Let's see, Sustainable Indiana. 2016, uh, let's see, Ali O'Malley, let's just give that a try, but the tribe building is just such a big, big part of, you know, you got to put the social in social media, you can be a broadcaster all day long, and if you don't have anybody who, you know, who cares about giving your stuff a boost, then it's, it's really hard to make something happen, so that's absolutely, you know, imperative that you do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and post this link in chat as well. This is to one of the, the webinars that we did. We didn't do all that many, but I think the ones that we did were really quite nice. We had a panel of, I believe, three different um, speakers on this. Bob Bronson from the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, um, Ali O'Malley, and then Eric Nagyu, who is kind of from our neck of the woods. He's originally from Michigan City. His mom, Jeanette Negu, is real involved in Save the Dunes, or has been, where Nancy is a board member. So Nancy, you've been awfully quiet. I hope that you're hearing me okay. And if you've got anything in particular that you, know, you would like to cover tomorrow, today, um, anytime during the week, you know, I want to just kind of interlace examples that are getting to the heart of what each of you have shared that you would like to, um, to do. Okay, and then Charlotte's asking, is there a list of all the ones that I did? Are they on the site? I am not sure, frankly, but I'll tell you one easy way that you can get to them is just to click on the link I've shared in chat, and that will take you, you know, to this video. You can then go to, you know, Sustainable Indiana's uh, YouTube page, and you can see all of them right here. So we did do a lot of cool, you know, cool things, and they've gotten a pitifully number of, you know, pretty small number of views, unfortunately. It's just not the greatest. Um, so it's, you know, I'm not going to cry about it, but if, if anybody wants to check this out, this is the one that we would have had Tacey on. Uh, that would have been cool, but that's all right. 
Um, but they were all very good. We had one about climate change that was excellent. We had one that was um, Hoosier homesteads and rural working models. We had a permaculture guy from Highland, Indiana, you know, kind of a, a regular suburban or urban area. And then we had somebody who has a, a homestead, you know, downstate in more of a farming area. And that was fun. Um, that guy, Dan, uh, oh dear, Dan, oh man, this is why I gotta like interview people because I can't remember everybody's name off the top of my head. Dan Sockwriter came up on my Facebook group before. He is down in Indy and he was part of this uh, alternative economic models. We also had food swaps featured on this. So, you know, I, I really like, um, I really like hosting these kind of symposiums that brings, you know, two or three different people that all have a different angle on it because I find that that helps me find the commonality. It helps my thinking. So if you're a blogger, you know, that might be something to consider is just, you know, interview somebody that you could, you could have on your, on your blog. Or, you know, if you feel like you want to put on uh, webinars or podcasts, I love that. I'll be happy to talk to you you know, either during this, if, if enough people were interested, or, um, you know, or separately, if I kind of think probably not everybody's going to be drawn to that. So, okay, Nancy, I'm good, sound, sound is fine now. Oh, I hope you feel better. She said it took her three computers to get connected. Oh, my. So sorry. Okay, so Lisa is saying she would like to learn how to make podcasts and videos. Great. Okay, so if other people indicate they're interested in it, then we could, you know, try to address that for part of, you know, one of these days. If, if it's just Lisa and I, then we'll take that offline. Uh, let's see. Okay, we've got about seven minutes left, so let me see how we're doing. I, I did mention that I want to show you one tool that makes it very easy to communicate with people in a lot of places, and I think seven minutes is just about the right amount of time I need. That tool is something called Hootsuite. And I don't know how many of you use a dashboard or have heard of Hootsuite, but it's H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com. And it's Hoot, you know, like an owl. So an owl is their little logo. I don't use this all the time, but it is really, really helpful when you want to kind of get your work done in batches. You know, like Lisa mentioned, getting out of a Facebook friend mode. To try to get work done on Facebook, I do find a little bit um, daunting sometimes because it's just really hard for me not to like my sister's picture or my you know best friend's post or whatever. I can't go in there and just be all about business. Hootsuite kind of allows me to put on blinders and only see what I want to see to get the task at hand done. So for instance, like here's how this might work. If um, Okay, let me just see if I can find your blog again, Lisa. I know it's the savorymuse.com.wordpress. Let me see if I can find this today. I had a little trouble the other day. Okay, this is Lisa's new blog. <clears throat> so I'll give her a shout out while I'm at it. Um, she's got, do, 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 okay. I'm excited to support you or your organization in your work with sustainability, local food system, habitats, and ecosystem. See the, oh, I love that. I, you're saying what I'm saying. This is too cool. She sees the world from between the edges. I live between the edges. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. So I am going to like that. I would love it if I could. I'm not following the blog already, but I just, in one click, now I'm following. So that's cool. And then what I could do would be to go to one of her, um, let's see, recent posts. I think you've started to post on here already, have you? Let's see, recent post, another year. All right, let's just give her a little shout out. Another year. Uh, okay, so we talked about URL yesterday. That's a key concept, and that just means, you know, website address. Okay, so it's the specific page where this, this post lives. It's not the savorymuse.com you know, dot wordpress.com, that's her website address. What I want is this particular, you know, story right now. And I kind of picked it a little bit out of, uh, out of the blue. But I'm just going to say, um, let's see. <laughs> Let me see if I can make this as meaningful as possible. 
Okay, food is an interesting way. Interesting ways reflects moods. Uh, okay, healthier. All right, and then it's usually the aftermath that gets our attention. Upset stomach, digestive distress, weight gain, mood swings, rather than the sweet whisperings that can guide us well. Okay, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. Um, all right, I'm really excited by this. I want to do this first before I go to Hootsuite, but I actually know somebody who wrote a book called um, Gut Guide, and let's see, her business is Alive and Well, Health and Wellness, and just the way that you said things manifest, you know, in the gut and that kind of thing. Um, that's what Mari pretty much writes about. She actually did write the book called Gut Guide 101, and I'm just thinking that might be an interesting person for you to connect with. I don't know if that gut mention was just a one-off thing, but um, you know, I just love making the connections. You might want to go to get her Gut Guide 101 gift, and you can get the you know free first chapter or two. Um, so that's kind of neat. Anyway, sorry, I do get distracted by the shiny object <laughs> syndrome. But again, I don't know if that's one of your um, you know main things that you talk about, or if that was just one sentence. One one tip I just want to talk about is uh, when you tag your your posts. Um, let's see if you're doing that already. Yes, you are. Okay, great. Good for you. This entry was tagged, cooking, food, healthy, life, seasoned sourdough bread, wisdom. You know, it's not tagged with, you know, digestive distress, okay? So because she didn't make that one of her tags, I'm kind of feeling like that's that's an incidental mention. That's not the biggest deal. It's more about wisdom. It's more about life, seasons. So if I would have read that first, I probably would have said, that's what Lisa sees as being the most important aspects of this post, not so much with the gut guide. So that was probably a little, <laughs> a little manic episode we didn't have to go through. But anyway, um, let me just do this, and I'm going to go ahead and go to Hootsuite, and um, I can post a link right here. I showed you link shortener yesterday with bit.ly. One cool thing I like about Hootsuite is they've got a built-in link shortener, so you can do that right there. And um, okay, right now it's highlighting all my husband's uh, business stuff, which I don't necessarily want to do. But I'm going to tweet your your link, Lisa, on my Kathy Sipple. I'm going to do it on 219 Green Connect because you know I own that. And I can do it on, you know, the Facebook page. I can do it on, um, you know, I could do it in a bunch of different places. I'll do it on Google+. And then, uh, Charlotte, you know, what, the main reason that I was going here is that you can also add groups either on LinkedIn or on Facebook. So if you're in some groups where you want to share uh, a post, this is a good way to do it across multiple platforms in one place. You would ask, you know, can I send all my Facebook people uh, a message very quickly? Unfortunately, you can't send fans a message quickly, but you can post across multiple platforms all in one click here on Hootsuite. So let me just finish finish this up. Um, okay, a new favorite blog read. Okay, check out uh, usings of the savory muse uh, local chef Lisa Harris okay and then um, let's see for bonus points I've got no time left but instead of just doing that I'm gonna go ahead and put in the Michiana hashtag because Lisa's in the South Bend um, area so Michiana is kind of going to give it some like local context and I'll go ahead and put in NW Indiana because we're not awfully far away and then people that I follow or that follow me in Northwest Indiana would also be more likely to check that out. And then what the heck, I'm just going to put in local food hashtag because I know that that's one. All right. And then I'm just going to do send now. Oh, I'm over. Um, okay, let me take out, I'm going to just take out a few characters so that I'm not over. Okay, and I'll do send now. Great. So that's a super easy way to reach out to a lot of people. Uh, all right, I need to update my Google Google Plus page. All right, well, I just sent it to the other four or five places. So hopefully, hopefully you'll learn some things um, about tribe building today, about getting the word out to a lot of different people, 
creating your circle, your first circle, your Dunbar list. Who are the people that know you, like you, trust you, want to go where you're going, they want to drink your Kool-Aid? <laughs> and then how do you explore the edges by doing network diving? How do you use the advanced tool in LinkedIn? How do you, you know, use hashtags on Twitter to find people interested in the same topics? Hopefully we're stirring the pot, we're giving you some things to think about, and we'll be continuing tomorrow. So thank you for your kind attention, and I'll really try to keep us on track time-wise tomorrow. See you back bright and early tomorrow morning. Thanks a lot.